Hello, welcome to Holy Spirit 30. This is day 19 and I am super, super excited, um, you know, receiving the testimonies and the feedback that we get from your um, messages and all the rest. Quite important as well at the questions because I believe that questions um, really and truly are wells of wisdom. And by that, I mean a well contains water. Um, but if, if you if you are able to ask the right questions, you're able to bring out the water, the light. So points of contradiction or seeming contradiction or lack of clarity usually are points where revelation and light is about to come to you. So every question, please let them come in. Drop them in the comment section. I've tried to answer a few of them, um, but for many of them, we're going to record videos specifically to address these questions. And so please just watch out for that. Now, be reminded as well that we're recording these videos not just to increase your knowledge of the Holy Spirit. No. Knowledge is meant to increase the value that you place on the Holy Spirit. The more you know about him, the more value and premium you should place on him. And the more you should be hungry for his ministry in your life. And that's the essence. That's the goal of these teachings to get you to a place of hunger, thirst, and strong desire for the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life. Now today, I mean, so much has been said about the ministry of the Holy Spirit, but I want to come into some very important um, thoughts about what the Holy Spirit really will do with you. I made a statement one time in these teachings, and I said that the Holy Spirit will do with you what he did with Jesus. You remember that? That he's going to build your life. Um, in the same way that he built the life of Jesus. Now, what is one thing that the Holy Spirit did with Jesus? He made him a soul winner. It is impossible to have a true, deep, an authentic relationship with the Holy Spirit without him making of you a soul winner. And by soul winner, I mean someone who has, number one, a burden for the lost. Number two, who is consistently living, who lives a life that consistently reaches out to the lost. And number three, can validate the message of the gospel. Let me say that again. Number one, he has a burden for the lost. Number two, lives a life that consistently reaches out to the lost, the dying world. And then number three, has the capacity, the ability granted of him, of the Holy Spirit to validate that message. Now, if you remember what Jesus said, and I, I, I want to read you from Luke chapter 10, verse, um, verse 2. It says, um, this was Jesus speaking. It says, pray ye the Lord of the harvest and he shall send you, he shall send laborers. Now, this is Jesus speaking. He said, pray the Lord of the harvest. Obviously, he wasn't talking about himself when he asked the disciples to pray. He said to pray the Lord of the harvest. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in charge of the harvest. And I need you to understand that. Now, look at it. The Holy Spirit, his goal was to lead Jesus to the cross and ensure that he resurrected from the dead as a perfect sacrifice for sinful mankind. Remember in Romans the 8th chapter, Paul said to us, he says that Jesus was raised by the Holy Spirit. He said, if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead. In Romans chapter 6, it tells us that he was raised by the glory of God. That's the Holy Spirit. Okay, so the Holy Spirit raised him from the dead. To what end? That he might be the Savior. He might be the Messiah, the promised deliverer of all mankind from sin. Now, he, he raised him from the dead and then he raises us up so that we are messengers of that gospel to tell people what exactly he did in Christ Jesus. So he's the Lord of the harvest. He brought up this plan. He instituted the plan. He executed the plan of the coming. Remember, he was at the birth. He was, I mean, at the Jordan. He was at the resurrection and now seated on the right hand of the Father. Now, what is he doing? He's recruiting people from everywhere around the face of the earth to preach that message of the gospel, to reach people with the message of what Jesus has done. So Jesus introduces us to the idea that the Holy Spirit is the Lord of the harvest. And what he wants to do is to push men into the harvest. Remember Peter, that supernatural experience he had with the Lord Jesus 
and how that um, he caught a mighty catch of fish and all of that. Um, remember what he said to him thereafter. He said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Now, if we say that the Holy Spirit is another Jesus, Allos Paracletos, another comfort in the same manner of the Christ, then we are saying that if we follow the Holy Spirit, he will make us fishers of men. So I want to make this bold statement here, uh, and I'm going to explain this in, in just a bit. You can't truly claim to know the Holy Spirit without being a soul winner. In fact, ultimately, ultimately, the proof of your followership of the Holy Spirit is that he makes out of you a master soul winner. It, it, I mean, praying in other tongues without being a soul winner is a waste of tongues. Falling under the power without being a soul winner is a waste of divine resources. Remember, Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and then he will make you witnesses. So the Holy Spirit has an assignment in your life to make you a witness of the message, a witness of the truth. Now, how does he do this? Three things. Number one, and I want you to, if you're taking notes, you can put down these notes. Number one, he gives you a burden for the harvest. That's the first thing the Holy Spirit wants to do. Number two, he gives you a vision, a burden for the harvest. Number two, a vision of the harvest. And number three, power for the harvest. So number one is a burden for the harvest. And maybe we'll just look at the first two, a burden and a vision. And then number three, which is power for the harvest. Let's state categorically that the Holy Spirit is drawn into areas of darkness and brokenness. How do I know this? Genesis chapter one, the first place where we are taught, uh, you know, uh, for example, you could have said that the Holy Spirit was in the heavens, the glorious heavens. You could have said that the Holy Spirit was on the lush earth. No, he says, and the spirit of God brooded upon the face of the deep. So where do you think the Holy Spirit is brooding today? He's brooding in Muslim nations. He's brooding over broken humanity. He's brooding over people around our nation, around our world, who need the message of the gospel. Because darkness in that scripture, when it says um, he brooded upon the face of the deep and darkness was upon the face of the waters, darkness there was not just an absence of light. Darkness represented judgment because of sin, the fall of Lucifer. And so he says the Holy Spirit brooded upon that place. And what was he trying to do? To bring light out of that place, to bring order out of that place. So that you understand that it wasn't just a creative thing. It was actually a picture of what happens with the new creation. Paul alludes to that. He says that, this, he says that God who called the light to shine out of the darkness has shone forth in our hearts. So he takes Genesis chapter 1 and puts it side by side what happens within the believer, which means the Holy Spirit, when he says he was brooding upon the face of the deep there, he wasn't just talking about the darkness because um, of the absence of light. It was darkness because of sin, darkness because of, the, of judgment, darkness because of Lucifer. And so where do you think the Holy Spirit has an affinity for today? Darkness. He's still brooding upon the dark places of the earth. He's still brooding upon the dark lives of the earth. And guess what he's waiting for? He's waiting for you and I. You see, because the Holy Ghost will brood. But God has to say, let there be light. And now he has sent us forth just the same way God said, let there be light in a dark world. We as well say, let there be light through the message of the gospel. And so the Holy Spirit is brooding on the face of the earth, but he's waiting for those who will put the word on their lips and communicate this message to reach as many people as can be reached. Can I tell us something? One of the greatest harms, one of the greatest disservice that has been done to the body of Christ is that we have kept quiet on the importance of soul winning. At the core of our Christian faith, at the core of our spiritual maturity, is the fact that we become soul winners. You know, I, the, the Lord said this one time to me. He said, you are never more like me 
when you're on your knees in intercession for the lost world and you are you on your feet with the message of the gospel in your mouth. I want to say that again. You are never more like me. You know, people say, Lord, I want to be like Jesus and all the rest. And he said to me, he said, you are never more like me than when you're on your knees in intercession for the lost world and when you're on your feet with the message of the gospel on your mouth. And I'm saying that to you as well. You're never more like Jesus other than at such points. So what is the first thing the Holy Spirit will do? The Lord of the harvest. He said, pray the Lord of the harvest that he may trust, he may send forth laborers out into his harvest. The word send forth, trust them means to push with force, which means many believers will rather sit on their couch and enjoy all the blessings of God. But the Holy Spirit wants to do such a work that he can push you out. And how does he do it? Number one, a burden. Usually he will place within your heart a burden for the lost, a burden for the needy, a body burden for sinners. That's where it starts from. Um, and that burden will lead you into prayer. If we genuinely and truly fellowship with the Holy Spirit, we'll begin to feel what he feels. We'll begin to love what he loves. We'll begin to hate what he hates. We'll begin to carry the burden that he carries. And having fellowship with the Holy Spirit for so long in my life, I know that he has a burden for the lost. He wants many more children to come to this Jesus. He wants the work of Jesus on the cross to yield as much return and as much harvest as possible. And so once we begin to fellowship with him, one of the first things the Holy Spirit wants to do is to put a burden on your heart. And that burden will lead you into prayer. That's why you find out that the prayer life of those who genuinely know the Holy Spirit is filled with intercession, usually. It's not, it's really filled with petition. It's usually filled with worship because he glorifies Jesus and intercession because he rolls on them the burden of Jesus. And so the Holy Spirit wants to place upon you the burden the burden that Jesus had. And then that burden leads us into prayer. It leads us into prayer. You know, the Bible says that he saw his seed afar off. Therefore, God was okay to um, um, to afflict him because he saw the seed that was to come afar off. There's a seed that God saw and that seed will not be burned. That seed will not be expressed, save that we put the word on our lips And so the first thing he does there is that he places a burden on your heart. Now, remember this. The Holy Spirit will never strive forever with mankind. So when he places that burden on your heart to pray and you refuse to pray, he's going to have to look for somebody else. And I believe one of the things that we have to do on this uh, this, um, episode is to actually repent um, for those moments where we took lightly What was most important to the Holy Spirit? I don't know. Some of you, many of you watching this are married. I don't know if your spouse has ever walked up to you and then you could see pain in their eyes and they are saying to you, the things that mattered to me, you just took them for granted. You took it so lightly. It didn't seem so important to you. I have a feeling that that's the way the Holy Spirit feels many a times. Souls matter to him. And many a times he's tried to roll off his burden on you, try to roll off that desire to see many more saved upon you. And then we're just not available. You know why he has to roll it on you? Because it takes intercession to break the grounds. It's not just the preaching of the word, intercession. And he has to roll that burden upon somebody so that that person can then intercede. You see, and then the second thing the Holy Spirit will do is that he'll begin to give you a vision. And what do I mean by vision? He begins to change your desires. He begins to change. You know, initially you start out, all you want is fish. I want my boat filled. I want my net filled. I want a net breaking, boat sinking, catch of fish. But by the time he's done with you, just like Jesus did with Peter, all of a sudden, all you want to see is a net full of souls. That's what you want to see. He begins to change your your desires. When you started out, the Holy Spirit was your um, go-to guy to help you get some dollars, to help you get a better car, to help you get a spouse. All of a sudden now, the Holy Spirit is is far more than that to you. Now you're beginning to see the vision. It's like the sand of the seashore and the stars of heaven. You begin to see your place in that divine plan to bring many sons to glory. And here's what I want to let you know. You have a place. 
you have a place in that divine plan to bring many sons to glory. And if you will yield to the ministry of the Holy Spirit, he will roll that burden on your heart and he will grant you that vision of the harvest. Here's today's big, bold fact. You have a critical role to play in the end time harvest. And the Holy Spirit is waiting on you so that he can train you. You have a critical role to play in the end time harvest. But the Holy Spirit is waiting on you so that he can train you. My prayer and my desire today is that you will yield him that opportunity. And I think for a moment, I want us just to repent of the Lord of taking for granted the thing that matters the most to him, which is souls. Repent of the Lord and just make a fresh commitment to say, Holy Spirit, I'm yours to train. I'm yours to command. Use me. Use me. I have a place in the end time harvest. Help me find my place. I will start out by praying. I will start out by going. But Lord, dear rest, Holy Spirit, I want to be as effective as I can be in this harvest. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Welcome again to Holy Spirit 30. And I'm glad you've made it this far. Um, please like the video, share the video, comment there in the video. And then I'll be here again tomorrow.